This is my desire, O Lord. This is my desire. This is my desire, O Lord. This is my desire. To rest in your presence, not rushing away. To cherish each moment, here I would stay. This is my desire, oh Lord, this is my desire. This is my desire, oh Lord, this is my desire. Good morning and welcome to you all here and to those joining us at home online um, for worship today, which is called Low Sunday. So, um, we are blessed by our own Rev. Les leading our worship with Holy Communion, so we thank you. It's lovely to see our young people with us today. We had a lovely Easter. Have you eaten all your Easter eggs? Oh, now do you think Rev Les has eaten that great big bar of chocolate you give him? Because he never shared it with any of us. Oh, yeah, <laughs> That's called selective hearing. I said to the children, do you think that the Rev Les has eaten that great big bar of chocolate? Oh, yeah. Better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh. See, you know who your friends are. Yep. Um, please take time to read the notices with all the activities taking place in this church, forthcoming events. And we thank Sandra for collating these each week and for Simon who is printing them. So thank you both. I have got... Oh. There's one little addition to the notices I've been asked to say. It's under Gavin and the... Um, the, the code, is it the, the link, thank you, Jill, um, is, it should read giving, com, page, G, V, N, not U, N. So it's a V, not an, a U. So thank you for that. Now next Sunday at Trinity is the farewell service to our superintendent, Reverend Sue, at six o'clock but we are invited to go after 4.30 for tea and cake. So if you can come along and support this special service for the Reverend Sue, to thank her and celebrate the time she has been with us. A message from the Reverend Pam. Yesterday, she received a lovely card with a lovely message, but unfortunately, it was not signed. If you know this is you, <laughs> the Reverend Pam would love to hear from you. Please keep Andrew and Paul in your prayers. At the moment, Paul is in the Grange after hurting his leg, but he is being seen to, so hopefully they might be home later today. Now, we have a few birthdays. We have Sean Marshall. We all know Sean, and she's 40 today. And Paulina Mem, and she's not 40, but her birthday is tomorrow. We've got Karis Labus on Tuesday. On Friday, we have Glyn Summers and Helen Blakemore. And on Saturday, it's Bernie, Bernie Hill's birthday. So we wish you all a very, very happy birthday. Have a lovely day. Thank you, Rev Les. 
Oh, you heard that. I heard that. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, and if it's your first time here, you are most welcomed. We are very relaxed and informal, as you've seen thus far, but we do get down to some serious business when we're here. Though Sunday, oh, what on earth is that about? Well, I'm glad it's not low in numbers, but it's low really in our mood and uh, our experiences. Jesus has left us and what gracious and glorious time we've had over Easter. And now we are in that moment of mixed feelings, don't quite sure what to feel. We miss him, but we are blessed also. And we have days of high and low, don't we, through our experiences. But we celebrate today that the fact that Christ is risen and he is with us. And we can acknowledge that in our worship today. Our call to worship can be found in these words today. Come, let's open our hearts and mind and raise our voices in worship together in this place right now. Let us offer our praise. Loving Lord, we gathered you and in this moment to worship you. We come as we are, young and not so young, happy, sad, worried, carefree, full of faith, or maybe struggling a bit. We know that you, in this place, we will meet with you, and you will meet with us. Risen Lord, together may we discover more of you and experience your presence, not only in our worship, but throughout our daily lives. The disciples told Thomas, we have seen the Lord, but that wasn't enough for Thomas. He already missed out once and he needed to see for himself. We gather today determined not to miss out on anything you have in store for us. Our doors and our hearts are open to you, O Lord. Risen Jesus, meet us here today. We need to meet you for ourselves. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. As we're in this continuing season of Easter, we sing our first hymn, Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing. It's 297 in our inbox, otherwise it will be on the screen. Please stand if you're able. Thank you. 
Now, you may think I'm old, and sometimes I feel old, and I need to have a chair sometime to sit down. How do you feel when people don't believe you? Have you ever had such a time when you say, Mummy and Daddy don't believe me when I said something or something in school happened and uh, they didn't believe me? How did you feel? Well, our story today is about a person, a private, um, private conversation. You felt bad, did you? See, if you ask the question, you need to wait for an answer. And our young friend here felt bad when people don't believe him. I wonder if we feel bad too sometimes. Hmm? Well, we can have a story about a man called Thomas. Now, Thomas was his own person, and we heard lots about him when he was with Jesus. And in there, when he, Jesus met with them and talked, and they did things, and Jesus saw, and Thomas saw lots of things, lots of miracles happen. He was there when they um, put Jesus on the cross. You know, he seen him die, and he believed all that. But when his friends said to him, Jesus is not dead. We've seen him. He's alive. Uh-uh. Thomas did not believe him. And they said, yes, he is. He is. He really is alive. You've got to believe this. And he said, no, unless I see what I saw on that day, I ain't going to believe it. Hmm. wonder if we say words like that sometimes. No, nah, I can't believe that because we saw something else happen. No. Unless I see... The wounds in his hands. Oh, do you remember? We talked about last week where they put nails in his hand and stuck him up on that cross and the wound in his side. I won't believe him. No, sometimes we need evidence. Sometimes we want to see signs so we can believe in Jesus and believe in our stories that we tell. Jesus said, Blessed are they who have not seen, but believe. And he's really saying, happy are you who believe, but not have seen. No, I wasn't there. I wasn't there when they crucified Jesus, but I believed it. I believe it. And when you believe something is true, it makes you warm inside. Just by there, we have a warm spot when we believe something. And you know, Believing in Jesus, no, we weren't there and we didn't see it. It really is a good thing. Sometimes we have to trust people for what they are telling us. And then we say, Lord, help us. Lord Jesus, help us to believe what they are saying, even though we can work it out in our heads. So when mommy and daddy say things to you, say, I'll check that out with Rev Les. Yeah, I'll check it out, Mommy. I'll check it out, Daddy, before I believe. No, 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 no. We must believe what has happened and what will happen. We are in this period now of still in Easter eggs. Anybody got any left? I come in around. <laughs> look, look. I'll come around later on and help you out, all right? Because <laughs> that lovely big bar you gave me, oh, my gosh. I have at it all. I am. So, and I still got room for more. Believe me, I ate it and I enjoyed it. So, if you need help, you know I'm the one to call. But we are here today because we believe that Jesus loved us, died upon the cross for us, and we believe it so much that we can't contain it to ourselves. And the disciples couldn't contain themselves when they saw Thomas. We have seen him. We have seen Jesus. Over the next few weeks, we're going to have other people say they've seen him, and we need to believe their stories also. So, whatever you do in Sunday school today, we don't know. Yeah. Oh, a generous community. All oh, right. So that means you have more eggs to give out? I like to go eggs. Uh, I'm going to the children today because they need me there. But you, 
listen to what is being said and believe it because it will help you grow up to be good boys and girls and good men and women later on in life. I want to show you now a video clip. Now, it's that small. Some people will say, God, that was short as Revelers' sermon. So sad. That ain't going to happen. Um, so we're going to watch this clip now just to refresh, uh, re refresh, um, refresh our minds and what these, the story continues to be. Thank you. What? hey -oh. ah! Jesus appeared to his disciples to show them that he was alive. One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. Hey, hey, Later, the disciples told Thomas, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time, Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Oh, hey guys. Peace be with you, he said. Then Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Blessed are you who have not seen, but believe. And that's very important, you know, because without hope, without faith in God, our lives would be very sad. There'd be nothing in it to help us live out a good life as God would want us to. So grow up always believing in Jesus and know that lovely warm feeling inside, knowing that you are right, that God is alive in Christ in our lives today. Let's say our prayer now, I know it's on the screen, to help us learn the words so that when we go out through our lives, we can always recall this prayer. And it's a good end because Jesus gave it us. He told us how to pray. And he said these words, we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who we trust and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. Now, I have an assistant to help me out with the next bit. You tell me whether he was any good. Because Simon's going to come now and lead us in a song that you might have sung in school. And it's this one, gave me eyes so I could see. Now, we're all going to sing this, so we have to pay attention. As you know, he's a teacher. We have to pay attention. So, Simon, if you will lead us in this uh, song now, we could have a piece of music first and then get us going. Yeah, if I sing through the first verse, and then we'll go back over the first verse, so you can all join in then. He gave me eyes so I could see the wonders of the world. Without my eyes I could not see the other boys and girls. He gave me ears so I could hear the wind and rain and sea. I've got to tell it to the world. He made me. I can, see, now? I can see lots of people singing along, and you all know it, even though you weren't in schools in the 70s. But, 
you all know it really well. So if you stand there, and we'll go back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah. He gave me eyes so I could see the wonders of the world. Without my eyes, I could not see the other boys and girls. He gave me ears so I could hear the wind and rain and sea. I got to tell it to the world. He made me. He gave me lips so I could speak and say what's in my mind. Without my lips, I could not speak. A single word or lie. He made, made my, my mind, mind so I could think and choose what I should be. I've got to tell it to the world. He made me. He gave me hands so I could touch and hold a thousand things. I need my hands to help me write, to help me fetch and bring. These feet he made so I could run, he meant me to be free. I've got to tell it to the world, he made me. Good, good. Do you think he was any good? And we've got a 10. Yep. We have to believe that Christ made us and to, made us to live a life that is full in God. He gave us eyes, hands, and see. So have a good time in your Sunday school lesson today. Don't be surprised if I suddenly appear at your door. It is me. Yes. And I'll be there for one reason and one reason only. So if you'd like to leave us now, and we ask God bless you and uh, be with you today. Thank you for bearing with us for that moment in time. I think it's so important that we acknowledge the children, yes, and give them a part of our service. Let's come now to our prayers of adoration and thanksgiving and confession. Let us pray. Lord, the disciples came together even though they were afraid. Forgive us for the times we keep ourselves to ourselves and lock our hearts to you, Lord. May we stop doubting and believe. Disciples weren't trying to lock you out, but they weren't even expecting you. Forgive us for the times when we try to keep you at a distance, when we just have stuff that distract us and lock our hearts to you, Lord. May we stop doubting and believe. Thomas really wanted Jesus to be alive, but he hung out for his own experience. Forgive us for the times we take second-hand information and miss out on the personal experience of your presence. Unlock our hearts to you, Lord. May we stop doubting and believe. Sometimes we do come, but without proper preparation, rushing into your presence and not thinking much about what will happen next. Unlock our hearts, Lord, to you. And may we stop doubting and believe. Jesus freely gave the disciples power through the Holy Spirit to forgive people's sins. And we thank you, God, for the touch of your Spirit in our lives, the assurance of forgiveness when we truly repent. We unlock our hearts to you, Lord. You grant us your peace. Jesus showed Thomas his arms and his side. The man was overjoyed at his presence. We too are filled with joy to meet you, O Lord. Thank you that you have sent 
sent us forth in your name and to do your will and to be your presence in this world. Thank you that you're always with us. In you, there is a world of joys and excitement still to be unlocked. And we praise you, Lord. Accept our prayers for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. We come now to our first reading today, but I just wanted to give you a bit of a, an uh, introduction into that reading. Our reading is titled, Praise to God for a Living Hope. Praise to God for a Living Hope. Peter may have been written, may have been writing to people who are exiles from their homeland, but they're experiencing a new beginning on their journey when they are converted to faith in Jesus Christ. They lived in such an hostile world, but the knowledge of salvation and their loving Christian community helped protect them from the Roman harassment. They were protected by God and the hidden yet secure salvation associated with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As faith transforms these marginalized exiles from being no people to God's own people, their experiences unlock the Easter story. Their suffering bound them to Jesus in his suffering and also to the glory of his resurrection. Our reading is a story of something that can be familiar with us. Please try and listen again with these new years and listen for something new this time that you had no, not noticed before. So our first reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 1. Praise to God for a living hope. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this, you greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, and the salvation of your souls. Amen. Please try and listen to our reading from the epistle, oh sorry, the Gospel of John. And that's going to be read to us now. John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, is on page 1029 in the Church Bible. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he said, he showed them his hands and his side. 
The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand, and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The purpose of John's Gospel. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Thank you both for sharing those readings with us today. There is no room for unbelief in our hearts or in this place. We need to fully understand that by believing, we are indeed blessed. We're going to put that into words now as we sing our next song, which says, Be Gone Unbelief. It's in number 667, and it's to the tune 569. If you're able, please stand as we sing this song.
May God bless the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts today. I'm always anxious, as you know, about the length of time, in, uh, time I take with my sermons. But as I was encouraged on the door, in words that I didn't quite understand, but I believed he was saying, preach it, brother, and as long as you want to. Something like that, I heard. <laughs> but it may have been different. Hmm. Our readings today uh, provides us with the opportunity to celebrate, again, the resurrection of Jesus. It gives us further opportunity to explore the resurrections of Jesus through the story of Thomas, of Thomas' encounter, and to reflect on the relationship between belief and faith. Thomas said, unless I see the wounds in his hands and his feet, I will not believe. The resurrection, resurrection had taken place. Thomas had somehow not been present when the sighting had taken place. He believed in the cross, in Christ's suffering, in Christ's burial. And why should he not? He was there. He believed what he saw with his eyes. But still he said, unless I see those wounds in my hands and his feet, I will not believe. Are there times in our lives when we feel like that, that we struggle with what we have not seen, but struggle to believe something? And that's what faith is about, isn't it? Seeing what we cannot see or understand. We give Thomas a hard time, but how many times should we be, um, have given him a hard time too for not believing? Without re realizing the struggle he was having, he has lost his friend and his master. He was grieving and was responding as any grieving person would. He had witnessed the death of Christ. He had seen him die. And now he was being told that Jesus is alive. Goodness sake. How differently would you have reacted if you were Thomas or that a situation came to you? So often we judge people by their behaviors, attitudes, and what they say without considering the reasons why they are saying and being what they are or who they are at that time. We can somehow sympathize with Thomas' dilemma. Seeing is believing, we say. If I see it, I'll believe it. Exactly what Thomas was saying. Thomas, like us, lived in the realms of reality, and reality was for him, and maybe for each one of us now, for the journey we are taking, was seeing, touching, before he could believe. Thomas feels like, feels like he was left out when the other disciples had seen the risen Jesus. Jesus appears again, and Thomas recognized him as my Lord and my God. Again, we are like Thomas. We need signs so that we can believe. If only I could see it, if only I could understand it, if only I could know it, then I would believe it without a doubt. Our, one of our hymns that we have sung or will sing today uh, expresses the need to have faith in God. And often we have to cry, I believe but help thou my unbelief. There's something very important about these wounds the disciples had seen. Thomas wanted to touch them in order to be convinced. For Thomas, the wounds would help him identify Jesus, reassure him that it is really him who has risen from the dead. There's a song that states, and I shall know him by the imprints in his hands. 
many will come to profess to be saviors and prophesies in the which is prophesied in the book of revelations but we shall only know christ by those wounds in his hands so if anyone tells you that they are the savior they are uh, the one who was promised just look at the hands check them out before you believe what your eyes are trying for you to see so thomas is not alone we need we also need evidence of the living Savior, but we can also say that we know he lives. Why? Because he lives there in our heart. When I was saying to the young children about that warm feeling deep there, it's that belief that we got here that cannot be shaken if we trust and believe what we know. The wounds are a constant reminder to us all. It was to be for... Uh, for Thomas, that Jesus is the Messiah, the risen Son of God. There are also reminders of Jesus' own, for, own dreadful suffering, his loneliness on that cross. He was alone. Even God could not look upon him. And we are told darkness covered the earth, almost as if God had turned his back on Christ. These wounds are there to demonstrate that the risen Christ is the same Jesus who had suffered so terribly, who had been alone in that dark place of pain and horror and grief. These words would certainly have reassured Thomas that he had good reason for his grief and his despair. Thomas needed to be taken seriously in his pain. Only then could he see and believe. Have you ever felt like that? Christ's presence after the resurrection is surely different from the Jesus and the company during his life, Jesus' company during his life. So much had changed through his death. The people had been changed, and the resurrection cannot and must not make the crucifixion undone. However, he had to take that journey of death and then life. Okay. Grief, anger, and pain do remain and have to be lived through. We have talked about the low times and the low days, and we refer to this as a low Sunday when we feel the joy of the resurrection, but we now have to walk on this journey. The resurrection puts the crucifixion in a new perspective, gives it an entirely new dimension. The resurrection of Christ was to be a dramatic change for Thomas and the disciples in their outlook on their life, death, and the future. The world would have then, uh, the world from then would have looked different to them. They had lost, they had lost all hope to their friend, their teacher, but now he was with them after all. He is offering them a chance to build a new and different relationship with him. He offers them deep hope of a new life to show a way forward through the pain. He shows the possibility of growth, the possibility of change. He brings about light in the darkness that wasn't there before. Resurrection is indeed a challenge in which God offers new possibilities, new way forwards, it brings comfort. It brings the promise that we are not alone. In the dark hours of the night, in the long watches of the night, Christ indeed is with us. What resurrection does is it offers the reassurance that even in the darkest moments of our grief, even when we feel most deeply betrayed, even in our most terrible moments, of loss and fear, even when we feel that we have failed miserably, even then Christ is there. It gives us strength. He does indeed give us strength. He encourages us to find a new beginning. Disciples had failed Jesus in the last hour before his death, sure, but they were not excluded from witnessing his resurrection. Instead, they were among the first to experience it. What hope there is for all of us today. 
It shows us so clearly that in these moments when we feel most inadequate and shut out and shut off and not where we would want to be, when we feel we cannot get it right, we cannot believe, was in fact, we, in, we in fact are still worth being touched by God. He still comes to us. He still wants to be with us. What God asks of us is not to seek answers, but to recognize him and respond to him, even in our pain and trouble. The promise is to us all. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. In times of trials and difficulties, we need to hold on fast and hold on to this fact. Throughout the New Testament, we read of many who received the good news of the gospel and of Jesus' saving grace. And they believed it. They understood it. They had great faith in him. In parables and stories, Jesus often entered at the pious children of Israel, not accepting him. But the outsiders welcomed him with open arms, flocking to his feast and responding to his call. How awful it is for us if our doubts stop us from accepting that great gift that Jesus is alive and Jesus has given us life today. Jesus' reaction in our doubts is that he comes to us as he promised, always to be with us. So wherever your path is taking you at this moment, be assured you are not alone. When Thomas said he would not believe until he put his fingers in the nail marks, how did Christ respond? <clears throat> how would we respond? Oh well, blow you. I showed you my act, that act of love, and duh, that's it. We read that he came to Thomas and met him. What, regardless of where the disciples were before the crucifixion and when they had run off, he still came to them. So don't let your failures hold you back. He appeared the following week and showed Thomas what he wanted to see. He met Thomas' need and gave Thomas what he needed at that time. The proof, the reassurance which Thomas needed to support his belief. And meeting our needs is something that we all want today. God does it every day, even though we don't realize it. But especially now at this Easter time, we remember how Jesus met our needs over 2,000 years ago on that cross. Now, it has been said many times, but it was Jesus' love for us that took him there, took him to that cross, and held him there. How strong was his love for us? He wanted to save us from our sins. He wanted to meet the greatest need that we had and still have. He wanted to save us from our sins, and there was no other who could have saved us. The Christ who satisfied Thomas's needs can satisfy our needs too this day. He can satisfy our deepest needs, simply believing in him. The Christ who always who allowed Thomas to touch his hands and his side was made himself vulnerable for us. He became vulnerable, the Christ for us. Simply believing in him, believing in God, Believe also in me, John chapter 14 tells us. The Christ who answers Thomas' questions also answers ours. Simply believe. Believe in the resurrection. Believe his words as he has promised to be with us always. Death could not hold him. He lives and reigns for us today. I pray that through the coming weeks, months and years, we will persevere, we will stick at it, and we will be able to put our complete and wholehearted trust in Jesus, the risen Christ. And may, as I've said many times before, may we say with great conviction, a doubter, not I. Go believe in and trust in the God who loves us. May God bless these words to us. May they grow as a fruitful tree within our lives and that we may share what we believe with others.
Let us pray. Lord God, help our unbelief. Father God, we come to you today with the joy of your son's resurrection still ringing in our ears. We acknowledge you as our king and bring before you now the needs of those around us. In faith, we ask that you will meet the needs of your children. We pray for those in authority as they make decisions on our behalf. Pray for our MPs, the Welsh Government and our councillors. We ask that you will guide them and lead them in the right path as they make work for the good of our city and our community. We pray for our church here and for those who gather for worship over the many years since its interception. We thank you that you have kept us and that we've been able to maintain a witness in this place. We pray for growth, that in the years to come, we may be able to celebrate further times and as the years roll on, so that witness in this place may continue. We think of the poor in our community and indeed around the world. Lord, only you can be, can be hope to them. And we are, as we are your hands and feet, we pray that you'd help us to support those who have needs and those who meet their needs. We pray for organizations like Christians Against Poverty and for more volunteers and resources and more funds and for successful outcomes and for all people who go through their doors. We pray, Lord, for those who suffer in your name, who are persecuted in your name and do not have the freedom that we have to worship. We pray for those who know we know who are ill today in body and mind. And as we have mentioned, Son, Lord, we pray, Lord, as we think of those on our minds now, that you will just bless them. And as we name them in the quietness of our hearts, we ask that you will bless them. Enfold them in your loving arms and bring them strength. We pray for all those we will grieve today over a loss of loved ones and the hurting and grieving at this time. We pray particularly for the families of Colleen Stevenson and Jane Blakemore. We pray for one another and for ourselves. Let it God fill our hearts with courage, fill our hearts with hope. For we ask these praise, praise in the name of your precious Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We normally finish our prayers and our thoughts at this time with the Lord's Prayer, but we did say that with the children. And you know why we do that, to encourage them in that prayer. We come to our table now, the table of communion. And can I say this, an open table, this table is for everyone. It's not because I say or I don't, but the table is open for you all. And if you want to come, then you are quite free to come. If you're following it in the service book, it's on page 169. The risen Christ came to where the disciples were and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. We sing our hymn now at this time, Have Faith in God My Heart. It's in 466. And the tune is 370, if you wish to. Please stand if you're able.
We wait upon you now for the offering for the work of the Lord in this place, the wider circuit in the world. Loving God and Father, we thank you for all the good gifts that you bestow upon us. We thank you for this opportunity to give this little to you. We ask that you will bless it and that it will be used mightily in this place to fulfill the needs of those, Lord, who have such wants. But Lord, as we stand, we offer our lives to you and ask, Lord, that you will dispel any unbelief in our lives that we may fully believe in you. So accept these offerings and accept our lives. For Jesus' sake, we ask it. Amen. Those who are following in a service book, we now uh, turn to page 168. Otherwise, it's on the board, on the screens with the um, uh, responses that I'd like you to make if you can. Year is bread, God's good gift. Come to us, the bread of love. Year is wine, God's good gift. Come for us. Cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. This is meant to give our thanks and praise. Blessing and honor, glory and power are rightfully yours, O gracious God. By your creative will, you may you brought the world the world to birth. In your generous love, you made the human family that we might see your glory and live forever in your presence. Blessing and honor, glory and power are rightfully yours, O oh gracious God. When we wandered from you in our sin, you sought us with your steadfast love. You did not give us up in the fullness of time. You sent your Son to be our Savior and deliverer. May uh, made of flesh and blood, he lived our life and died our death upon the cross. Death could not hold him, and now he reigns at your right hand. Blessing and honor, glory and power are rightly yours, O gracious God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we bless and praise your glorious name, saying, Holy, holy, holy God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed he is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed indeed is the Lord Jesus Christ, who at supper with his friends took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me when supper was ended. He took the cup and gave you thanks. Gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, we celebrate this Passover of gladness, for as in Adam all die. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive, except through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and the blood of Christ. Gather us who share this feast, into the kingdom of your glory, and with all your people in every time and place, we may praise and worship you forever, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Heavenly Father, now and for always. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. For him to be pleased. Hallelujah. We meet the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. Draw near with faith. Well, what then doth thee? The table is ready. And as you may realize or may not, we are using these elements here to remind us of the blood and body of Christ. For he himself took the wine and bread and said this, every time you eat it and drink it, you will remember me and the, the, the cross and the resurrection. So please come as the stewards direct you. And uh, I will do a dismissal prayer, so you'll know that when she received and you the dismissal, dismissal prayer, you may return to your seats. Everyone is welcome.
Christ broken for us. Body of Christ broken for us. Have no doubt, but only believe, for that which he has called you to do, he will provide the things that you require. Go in faith, believing his call upon your life. Go in faith, believing his word to you. Be not afraid, for he has promised to be with you forever. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. God, sometimes it's so difficult to believe, Lord, because you're so big and so vast. But we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have said, suffer the little children to come unto me. And as we come, Lord, both child in body, mind, and spirit, that you will bless us and we will know what you want for our lives. Bless these little ones, Lord. May they know you in all your fullness. And may they trust you as the years go by. And we pray for those who are more older experienced in life also to know that you are a God who is faithful to his word. Go in peace to love the Lord and to know that he is with you always. For Jesus' sake. Amen.
There is no shadow of turning without God. What he has promised, he will do. He asks only that you believe and trust his word. And in trusting, you will know, know his word in your life. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord for Jesus' sake. Amen. to a man but the ways thereof are not we seek God who knows our ways he knows our journey and the things set before us he knows the challenge of life to each one of us and he says to you today be not afraid for I am with you go and trust God go in belief that he will be with you in all things for Jesus sake amen
Hallelujah. Love's redeeming work is done. We need not fear or ever be afraid. For Christ is alive, alive to meet our needs and to walk with us in the journey that is set before us. Be of good faith and believe him and his word to you and to you alone. Amen. We say together the prayer that is on the screen now. Lord our God, we give you thanks because you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his resurrection we are brought to new life, so by his continuing reign in us we may be brought to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I trust that you felt God's presence among us today. I felt that, I, I pray that you have known his voice speak to you in whatever need and area of life needs speaking into. We're going to finish now with our hymn. And just to remind you, not because we're after all your money, but I'd like to give you the opportunity to shake out the last bit in your purse or whatever, we normally at the communion table take money, uh, gifts for the poor. So the basket will come amongst us again. And if you feel so led, please put in. And be assured that money does indeed help 
the poor in our community and the homeless also. So if you're able, please stand. And we sing our last hymn, When Our Futures Are Uncertain. It's uh, 713 in our hymn books, and it's sung to the tune, um, Here is love vast at the ocean. So no one will have any problems, I'm sure, with the tune or the words. Please stand if you're able. Thank you. As witnesses, we tell your story. By our words and actions, we tell that story. As witnesses, we sing your songs. As witnesses, you give us courage. As witnesses, you make us strong. So now we come together to hear your saving words to us and fill us with your spirit. We go and fill your world. Amen. And we say together uh, and share together the grace with each other. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.